Hi, this is Joe, and welcome back to part three of the battery replacement on the Jetson Bolt Pro. Let's get on with the next part of the battery replacement. I've done another video that explains how to prepare wire for soldering, the different types of tools that are needed. I'll put a link at the end of this video on that points toward that video. You might want to go ahead and watch that before you attempt to do your own battery replacement because it goes into the proper ways of soldering, the proper tools to use, and it will set you up and prepare you for this particular task. So this is a common type of wire stripper that you can find at uh, big box stores and things like that. This is a more of a specialized stripper that you can purchase on Amazon. Either one will work fine. The wires that we have here are 22 gauge and the best way to tell is just look at the stripper, put your wire, and I'll show you how to strip the wires. Um, and again my video, other video goes into how to distinguish a uh, wire size and which is commonly referred to as wire gauge. So watch that video, it will educate you a little bit on on wires and how to prepare them and solder them. When I strip wire I like to use this style of stripper. It automatically adjusts to the thickness of the insulation and then strips the wire. So what you want is at least a half inch to three quarter of an inch of bare wire when you strip. You place the wire in between the jaws and then you come down and you just squeeze the pliers and if you notice the insulation comes off. Again, we want three quarters of an inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch. And I always like to twist my wires. These wires are stranded. There's a bunch of little strands underneath the insulation. Now, coming to our battery, and we always want to keep these wires separate when we're working on them. This is a live battery. I've measured it. Static voltage is 36 volts, so you do not want to touch those two ends. What I do is take the wire, pull them gently apart to get some distance between the ends of the wire. And again, using our stripper, we want to come in and strip off half inch to three quarters of an inch of wire and again, I like to twist them. Do not touch the ends together. So we have the wires of both the connector and the battery stripped. Now we're going to splice them together and we're going to solder them. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can go over to Harbor Freight and for five dollars you can pick yourself up a really nice soldering iron that will solder wire up to 12 gauge. I've tested this, it works really nicely for soldering wire, it does a great job. The other thing that you're going to need is some rosin core solder. If you go over to one of the big box stores like uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, do not get the acid core solder that the plumbers use. That will is not good and will mess up your electronics projects. In this case you don't want to use that on a battery either. So pick up some rosin rosin core solder. It comes in different sizes. When you're doing wire it doesn't doesn't really matter if you get larger or smaller. Uh, just gets a nice little roll of some solder. You don't have to have fancy equipment like I do. Go get yourself a dish sponge and cut a little tab. And what you want to do is you want to wet this sponge. You're going to use this sponge to clean the tip of your soldering iron. Again, watch my video on soldering and using soldering irons. It will educate you quite nicely on how to work with soldering and wires. So before we plug the soldering iron in, we want to clear a spot on our desk here to work. We don't want a lot of clutter there. 
We want plenty of room so we don't burn ourselves or melt things around us. The soldering irons get very hot. They can get 700 degrees really easily. So clear your desktop, make yourself a nice space to work in. But we aren't going to plug in the soldering iron just yet. We're going to do some prepping first. You're going to need some heat shrink tubing or a little bit of electrical tape. Your choice. I like to use heat shrink tubing. It's easier to work with, holds better than electrical tape. But again, if you don't have any around or you don't want to buy any, then just use a little bit of electrical tape. Before soldering, if you want to use heat shrink tubing, you want to put the heat shrink tubing on the wire and push it as far away from the splice as you can because when you apply the heat it will shrink so what I like to do is split my wire a little bit more push it back if you want you can use different color heat shrink tubing or and a lot of people will use red on red, black on black, or not, as long as you're able to distinguish the wires before you solder them. So push your heat shrink tubing on. If you're using electrical tape, you can electri electrical tape the splices after you're done soldering. At this point, we have the heat shrink tubing on. Now you always want to make sure that you find that, that white striped wire that is your positive or red. So at this point what you want to do is you want to put the wires together at an angle and then you want to twist the wires together and you want to get the wires as a smooth as you can without any of the little strands sticking up if they stick up it will prevent the heat shrink tubing from being able to slide over the splice. So I really like to make sure that I get this really smooth of a connection here. See, and then if you want you can even take and you can test sliding your heat shrink tubing over the splice to make sure that it will slide properly. And again, push that as far as away as you can because the minute heat hits that, it will start to shrink and then you'll be in trouble. So you only want that to, sh to start shrinking when you're ready for it to shrink. Again, keep your wires separate. Double check and triple check to make sure white goes, the white stripe goes to the red and the plain black wire goes to the black wire. At this point what we're going to do is we're going to splice the other side and again we cross the wires and we wrap the strands around the wire to form the splice. Again tuck in those little strands so that they don't stick up because if they stick up you're not going to be able to get your heat shrink over the wires. Notice, see, I can't get that heat shrink over there because the little ends are sticking up. So really t twist them tight to make sure the wires are joined together really well. And see, now I can slip the heat shrink over the wires. Now I have something which is called a third hand. You don't need one but it does make wire soldering easier. They're very inexpensive. You can purchase them on Amazon or you can just get yourself some alligator clips and make your own. So what I do is I hold the wire that I'm going to solder in the third hand and that way the wire won't jiggle on me or move around. At this point we can heat up our soldering iron. When your soldering iron is hot you want to take a little bit of solder and you want to coat the end of your tip with it. It'll have a little ball form. That will help heat the wire and solder it much quicker than if you start out with a dry soldering iron. Now what we want to do is we want to take the soldering iron with a little blob of solder, hold it onto the wire 
and let the wire get hot. As you can tell, when I touch the solder, when it's hot enough, the solder will flow very nicely over the wire. And what you want is a nice, shiny splice. If the solder is dull and crusty, it's not hot enough. So you want a real shiny splice. Same thing when we're ready. Take a little bit of solder, put it on the end, come to the your other wire. You want to heat up that wire and when it becomes hot enough, the solder is going to start flowing on the wire. That's it. Both of the wires, splices, are soldered. Now let's let it cool. We don't want to slide the heat shrink tubing over until the wires have cooled down. Otherwise it will start shrinking before we're, we're ready for it to shrink. So just touch it lightly with your fingers. Make sure that the wires are cool. Then we'll slide the heat shrink over the, the splice of the wire. After the wire is cool, we just then simply take the heat shrink tubing and slide it down over the wire. You may have to jiggle it, you may have to bend it a little bit, but if you've done it right, you'll be able to slide the heat shrink tubing over. Now what we want to do is take our soldering iron and we want to shrink that heat shrink tubing. And the best way to do that is just take your soldering iron and gently rub the tip over the heat shrink and that will shrink the, the heat shrink down over the splice. At that point we are done with our soldering. We can take the charge connector from the cover and we can do a test and we now have our connector working. We now can install the battery pack and the cover back on the e-bike. This is the end of part three. In the next video we'll finish the battery replacement on the Jetson Bolt Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.